If you do know what it is that you want, but you still feel stuck, what is going to take me one step closer today? Listen for the answer. That is the thing that you need to lean into. Hello, hello. I am so excited that you are here for this episode of the She Means Business Show because I am joined by the amazing Susie Ashworth. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to chat with you. Firstly, congratulations. Susie has a new book out, Infinite Receiving. Yay! It's such a pretty book. (laughs) We're twins. Yes, I love it. It's really pretty. Um, And I'm really excited to dive into this. And just, I mean, the, the even the name Infinite Receiving, it just, how, I don't know how anyone wouldn't want to know more about that. So I just want to dig into this with you in this episode and also just kind of dig into like your story um, because I feel like you've just got so much amazingness to share. And I just, I, we just need to get it all out and just chat about it in this episode. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Thank you. How are you though? You've had a lot, obviously, I know we were just chatting just before I hit record, but you've obviously done your book launch. You've had a lot going on. Like, how are you feeling about everything? Well, I think it's quite interesting that you asked me that question and I can feel my eyes welling up. I'm oh. like, where's that emotion coming from? Um, I'm actually really great and I feel a little tired. Like there has been so much energy output really since the beginning of the year. So my body feels a little bit tired and I am catching up a little bit and clearly a little bit emotional because you just said, yeah. how are you? And I nearly cried. <laughs> oh, I know, but this, it's a lot, isn't it? Especially when you've like, like you were saying, it's like you birth a book. Like it's you, it takes so much to get a book out there and, um, it is a big process and it is, it, I think it is emotional. Um, but I also just wanted to acknowledge the fact that you said like you're feeling tired because we've just been doing a launch. And so for us, for me, it's been like for me and the whole, my whole team this year has been absolutely insane. And it's been full on, like, I don't think I've worked this hard in a really long time. And I think sometimes it's nice just hearing other people say, you know, I'm tired. I need it. I need a break because sometimes I think we just see, I mean, well, there's a lot of stuff online about people hardly working and making loads of money. And then you're just like, ah, but how do I do that? Because like, and it's just, I think it's nice to know the truth of that. We do go in phases of like having to really bloom and work our asses off for, 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 for what we want to create, what we want to put out there. Yeah. 100%. Glad you said that. (laughs) You're very welcome. Truth slaying today. (laughs) So... There is something in your book that you wrote that I want to read because I think this is a really good place to just kick everything off and get into it. You said, if you had told 19-year-old Susie that one day she would run a thriving multi-million pound business dedicated to helping people all over the world achieve their dreams, all while raising three children and finding profound happiness, even after the end of a 15-year relationship with their father, with whom she is still, she co I just said that all wrong, with whom she co-parents successfully, I'd probably have used a swear word. Similarly, if you had told me that I'd have Sir Richard Branson's telephone number at my fingertips, be writing my second book, be invited to speak on international stages, I'd have told you not to be ridiculous. And if you'd have told me that I'd have genuine, a genuinely happy heart, I know I wouldn't have believed you. When I tell you that I transformed myself from that selfish, self-centered 19-year-old who couldn't even get a promotion in pizza restaurant into who I am today, I truly mean it. And let me assure you, if I can achieve this transformation, so can you. (laughs) And I loved that. And because I feel like so many people need to hear it, but I just want to dig into this because, you know, going from somebody who couldn't get promoted at a pizza restaurant to building a multi-million pound business and having Sir Richard Branson as a contact in your phone is just massive. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to dig into it all and find out where it all began. And then I really want to dive into, after we kind of go back to the beginning of it all, I then want to dive into something else you put in the book, which didn't write the page number down, but I did write down. So basically there was another story that you shared that I want you to tell later on in this podcast. You talked about how you basically went from 420,000 in revenue Mm. to 1.2 million in revenue. And you talked about the story of how you basically had to jump off a cliff 
to have the breakthrough yeah. to be able to get there, which yeah. I thought was a really cool story. So I'd love to talk about that and for you to share how you made that financial leap. But first, like, just kind of take us back to the beginning of it all, of, of this journey that you're on now, uh, you know, with the success you've created, like, where did all that begin? Those little niggles, that little inkling, like, like, where did that begin? First of all, I just want to say, I've not had anybody read my book back to me. And Aww. obviously, nobody has read that passage to me. And listening to that, and it being like, oh my God, and that's true. And that's true. And that like, it's all true. It's my life. That's quite mind boggling. So thank you very much for that reflection. I'm like, if, if you're just listening to this, I'm smiling from ear to ear. It's quite wild. And yesterday was my son's 13th birthday. And whilst I know that the seeds of infinite receiving were being sown really from the day that I was born. Consciously, I made, well, there were two choice points. There was one when my foster mother passed away. That was huge when I was 19. I had to make a decision at that point to be a better human being. And I say, you read like that selfish, self-centered 19-year-old that was very much who I was and where I was operating from. And I have a huge amount of compassion for that version of me now. And I also understand, because I gave myself a hard time for a very long time. And I also understand that most 19 or many 19 year olds are selfish and self-centered and think that the world revolves around them. I think that the difference is, is that the price I paid for my self-centeredness was to not be able to communicate to the woman who every day her influence lives on through me. I couldn't communicate that to her. I couldn't say thank you. I couldn't, I couldn't be there for her. And that's a huge price to pay. So when she passed away, that was a choice point in the road for me. Who do I desire to be? And I didn't know the answer to the question, but I did know who I didn't want to be. And I think that for people listening, often in life, often in business, there's this desire to know all of the, how it's going to pan out. And you literally just read it. If you just told me back then that this is how it's going to pan out, I would not have believed you in a million years. There's been so many doors, so many opportunities, so many failures that I've needed to experience in order to get to this point. I could never have predicted it. So even if you don't know what you do want, knowing what you don't want can be an incredible starting point. Yeah. So for me, it prompted me to leave my hometown go traveling for four years and see the world. And that was a whole eye-opening experience for me. And then the second choice point was when I got pregnant with my son. And the moment I knew I was going to become a mother, I just, it was so clear. I wanted to be able to say to him, you can do anything that you want. And I looked around at the life that I was living and I knew that I couldn't say that with any authenticity. And so that started the cogs whirring, who am I going to need to be? What am I going to need to do differently in order for that sentence to be meaningful? And 13 years later, here we are. I love that. I love that so much. But so many people are in that place where they maybe have had that realization of, I want things to be different. This isn't the life I want to be living. But then just don't know how to get themselves like off the block. Like they just don't know how to get going. So when you were there with your son in that moment, what, what started to unfold for you? Like how did you start to like walk on that way? I had that idea, that thought when I was pregnant with him. So he wasn't even born. He was then born. I went through maternity and I can kind of just carried on with my life as it had always been. I was just now a mother. 
it took me until getting pregnant with my second child, Coco, who is now 11. So there's 23 months in between both of them. And I just thought to myself, if I do not change things now, I will never do it. And so uh, what I decided was to retrain. And in order to get into that space, I had to let go of a lot of stories around me not being bright enough, not being not being academic. I was street smart, but I wasn't book smart. I had dropped out of school at 16 years old and I just didn't think that I was very bright. So going into choosing my studies, my focus was what is going to be the most practical course that I can do? Like that was it. Like anything that I don't have to read loads and loads of books for, this this will work. And a few years before, a friend of mine had used hypnotherapy on me to help me stop smoking. And I thought, okay, I'm going to I'm going to try hypnotherapy. And I found a hypnotherapy and a psychotherapy diploma. It was for a year in Brighton. And when Coco was a month old, I started my studies. And in order to do that, I had to choose to know that I could be a student. I had to really let go of that. I'm too stupid. And I just committed to being a student and I committed to doing my best. And what was incredible is that I loved studying and I finished top of the class. Oh, wow. And that was really, really quite mind blowing to me. And what's even more incredible is years and years later, that teacher, the person who ran that course came and then did one of my business courses. So I love how that all that that, that circle came round. That's brilliant. I love that. Yeah. And I love it as well, because isn't it like the thing is like making the decision and then just doing something to walk in the direction of it, even though you don't know if it's the right step or the right thing, but like just opening yourself up to being curious and exploring the possibilities. And you just don't know where the path is going to lead, but it's always going to lead to a better place when you're, you know, moving in that direction. So I love that. So obviously you trained up. I think I actually, I mean, I do have your, um, calm birth school like the course oh! when I had was pregnant with my first son Casey I listened to your videos on it I, I'm sure I did I remember I remember were you in like a was it quite a dark room that you filmed in yeah I just have this memory of of the video uh, yes. of the videos yeah so I watched them so you did that the whole thing for the year and then how did it then all how did you then end up starting a business I did this program finish and I thought that I was going to work with people who had anxiety. That was anxiety and depression. That is what I thought that I was going to do. And I started and I realized very quickly that I was absolutely awful at working with people who were anxious and depressed kind of generally. But what I was very passionate about and very good at was hypnobirthing. I'd had two children at home using hypnobirthing techniques and I just thought, oh, I wonder if there's an opportunity here. And I signed up for another course. So I have not stopped learning. I've not stopped investing in my education and learning new things since I started that program. And I invested in a business program. And three weeks into that program, I had the idea. I mean, I didn't know what an email list was. I didn't know what a website was really. I didn't know anything. But three weeks into that program, I had the idea um, to create a video-based hypnobirthing program. So at the time, there were books, there were audios, but there were no video-based programs. And all of the hypnobirthing courses out there were very dry and they were very earth mama not that I have anything against earth mamas but they were just not me I was coming from this media background I had my nails done I was like having champagne lunches and <laughs> there were no courses <laughs> that spoke to my way of thinking and my way of being and so I thought there's an opportunity here and actually I approached somebody and said I've had this idea do you want to make um, these videos with me do you want to make this course with me and she said yes and so uh, we made this program called the Calm Birth School. 
and it was for people who didn't want to knit their own knickers but wanted to it was like recovering control freaks that was the positioning so I'm really <laughs> glad that it found its way into your hands <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the positioning and and what that did was ignite something in me because what I realized was I loved building brand I loved building business I what the much the first time I got my online sale, that first 97 pounds, I was like, oh my goodness, this works, it works. And so I got very, very excited. And what was also interesting is, is that I was very clear that there was quite a distinct difference between myself and the other people in the birth world, because they were voracious when it came to breastfeeding and new techniques on giving birth and all things vaginas, all things babies. I was all marketing, all business. I I just wanted to understand business and marketing inside and out. And what happened pretty quickly is that other birth professionals started saying, I see what you've done with the Calm Birth School. How have you done this? And I was like, well, I'll show you if you want. And that was such a big opening for me because there were very few people who were specializing in working with birth professionals. So whilst really I was teaching general marketing, because I had this very specific niche, I understood how birth professionals thought, how they worked, how they often felt guilty about charging, um, how they wanted to come across. How I just I understood that niche inside and out. And so all of my marketing became focused on being the person to come to if you wanted to build an online business because also people really weren't doing that in that niche at that time. So I became a go-to person. It was a accidental, very smart move that I was able to make. And it really, I suppose, put my name on the map for that audience. I love that. So obviously then how long did it take you to go from transitioning out of um, the Calm Birth School into well, what is now Infinite Receiving? I mean, years. Uh, <laughs> I think I had, I, I sold the Calm Birth School after five years. And that was a bit of a, I had to, there were quite a few mindset blocks around that. I was like, if I don't have this other business, will people trust me as a business coach? This is how people know me. Like, I didn't want to completely own that. But really, infinite receiving was 2021. I remember being in Costa Rica and I was like, what is infinite receiving? What is infinite receiving to me? What is infinite receiving to me? And I was on this leadership retreat and it just became, it was like I was almost shown my entire life and I was shown all of the places where I'd closed down and all of the places where I had opened up. And it was like, it's this, 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 and this. It was so simple and so obvious. And I often describe looking at life, like life is a masterpiece. And each day is like, it's also a dot to dot picture. And we're kind of, we can't see this masterpiece when we're, when we're in it. It's only as we reflect. And it was like, on this leadership retreat, I opened my eyes one day and I could see this masterpiece of my life and how the four pillars had supported me into getting to where I am now. I love that. Could never have predicted it. It sounds like obviously right from the beginning, you've really been proactive in like getting help and being in groups and learning from people. Like, has that just been like a constant thing throughout your whole journey? In business, there has only been six months out of my entire business life where I have not had a mentor. And the six months that I didn't have a mentor, I was flailing around in the wind. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just, I, so I've always believed in mentorship and coaching. Yeah, it's so powerful, isn't it? Well, 1000% because you can't, you don't know what you don't know and you can't see what you can't see. And so to, align yourself with somebody who's walked the path that you want to walk and get their insight. It just, it saves you time. It saves you money and it's great to not be doing it on your own. Yeah. Totally agree with that. So it's so powerful. Like I, yeah, I would never be where I am if I hadn't worked with the people 
that I've worked with who have helped show me the way. But it's funny, I think often in business, a lot of people starting businesses feel like they are supposed to know all the answers. They're supposed to have it figured out. And it's like, why do we put this pressure on ourselves? Like, that's just so ridiculous. Like, if you were learning a musical instrument or a language, you would go and get a teacher. Always. So I just think, why is it, why don't we have the same approach when it comes to starting a business? Um, Yeah, because it makes all the difference. So I want to talk about infinite receiving, like what it means. And then I really want to dive into the uh, money leap that you had Mm. and just talk about that of like, you know, there's so many people who start businesses and then never have that breakthrough. I mean, they never even get to the first breakthrough of making even 420,000 in a year, let alone over a million. So like, let's dig into it and um, talk all about, well, firstly, let's talk about what, what is, what is infinite receiving? For me, infinite receiving is a philosophy for living. And it is about being, being able to open yourself up to the infinite possibilities that there are for you as a human being and for you to receive what it is that you desire to receive. And so everybody actually is already receiving infinitely all of the time. It's just that many people, most people aren't doing it consciously. And so what the book helps you to do is first of all, tap into receiving what it is that you need, and then upgrading the way that you think, the way that you feel, the way that you act so that you can consciously create what it is that you desire. And that's when it gets super, super fun. Life is too short for us to not actually get clear on what it is that we want to receive but so many people have no idea what they actually truly want to receive and it it's 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 crazy how it's like that I mean how have society kind of shaped us like that I don't even understand it here's my take I genuinely believe that everybody knows what they want, but most people are afraid to say what it is that they want because they're afraid that it's going to cost them the things or the people that they love. Yeah. So whether that is disappointing a parent or a loved one or having to sacrifice time with their children or the people that they care about, there are stories that people believe are more important than their desires that keep them from owning what it is that they want. And I believe that that is a, not only a disservice to yourself, but it's a disservice to everybody that you, that you touch actually to not own your desires. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's it's interesting as you say that I um, have been doing this like activation experience and on day three was money day and um, I was prepping with my brother ahead of it. And I was talking him through like what, what I was going to share and um, one of the questions I was going to ask people was um, like, how does being a millionaire feel for you? Like if you thought of yourself as a millionaire, how would that feel? Um, and like, I can't remember what, what his, his, what did he say? Like, I think he said something like, I don't need a million. Okay. Like maybe you don't need a million, but like, let's dig into that. Cause why not? Like if you had a million, like, what would you buy? He was like, uh, I don't know. And I was like, well, no, we'll just like think like, you know, what would you want? Like, what would you spend the money on? And he was like, I suppose it would be really nice to have a lot of land so that I could rescue dogs. And then he was like, and it would be really nice to have the money so that I could take like the family or like away to like on, on like really amazing holidays. And like his list went off. I was like, oh, so you do know what you want. It is in there, but there's this whole barrier that is so subconscious that's actually, I think it was something around really, but I have enough. So I don't want to be greedy and have more than I should have. Wow. And I was like, oh, there it is. 100%. Yeah. We just, and most people are just, I mean, I mean, even, even for myself, there's probably so many things I'm not even consciously aware of that get in my way all the time um, and, and hold us back. Which is, it's so frustrating, isn't it? So um, I love that you teach all of this and like just help people to just unlock them, themselves and their own potential to you know I and mean, for anyone who is like I am stuck with this like honestly just go and buy Susie's book <laughs> um because it's it's so powerful to like learn those things um so I would I, so it'd be good to dig into infinite receiving more but I also want to hear about your own shift like 
like that that leap well firstly that leap into because I think am I correct in thinking that the Calm Birth School that was really successful that was a six-figure business wasn't it just got to six figures so it was it was about 100k a year yeah when I when I sold it so which is amazing because like I feel like so many people are trying to like get to their first six figures so that was obviously you at like loving and being so immersed and like wanting to know more about marketing and how do I build this online business and how do I do this and I think that's just a really powerful just thing to stop for a minute and just acknowledge that I think we can learn to get good at anything and every single one of us can learn to get really really good at, at digital marketing you just have to learn it and then apply it and practice and practice and there's going to be times where it's going to go horribly wrong and we're going to mess up and times when we're going to be like oh my gosh it worked so I love that that you had the idea and then you focused on like how can I get really good at this business side um because I think so many people start businesses because they love the thing but then they don't get good at the business side it's like for example, like what you were saying, you can be good at being like a hypno birthing teacher, but if you can't get good at the business side, then you're never going to be able to get it out there and help more people. A hundred percent. They go hand in hand. And so it's being willing to understand that, yes, you get to be an absolute master at your craft. And you also have to care about people hearing your message because it's understanding that the more you're able to get your message out there into the world, the more people that you're able to serve. You can't separate being great at what it is that you do and being great at letting people know what it is that you do. Yeah, so true. So then obviously once you sold that and then you started up a, a, a new business, like helping helping business, it, it's well, helping people with businesses, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pe mostly I work with online entrepreneurs who want to make a big impact in the world. So then you transitioned into that. And then obviously it's so you let, from what I think I gathered before, you leapt then to over a million before you actually rebranded it to infinite receiving. Yes. So tell me about this whole process and this transition. And did you feel like you were at a block when you'd reached 420,000? Did that feel like a bit of a holding pattern place for you? So 2018, my business has done 469,000 and we had doubled our revenue the, from the year before. And I really wanted to double it again in 2019. But what was interesting, interesting is that when people would ask me, what is your goal in 2018? I'd be like, like, I felt so uncomfortable saying that I wanted to make a million pounds. So from a mindset perspective, I was not owning that desire at all. It felt embarrassing. It felt like, who the heck am I to want that big number? I didn't feel ready for it. And that was reflected in the fact that I then did 420,000. I actually earned a little bit less than what I'd had the year before. And I could see that I was on that trajectory kind of halfway through the year. And, and that was really, really irritating me. And I, so I went to, I had a friend of mine, his name's Ron Reich. He hosts this uh, retreat in Colombia every year or every other year. And he said, come along. There's going to be lots of other seven and eight figure entrepreneurs there. You could learn a lot. And so I was like, okay, great. I paid my money got on the plane and went to this retreat in Colombia. And what was incredible for me, like right off the bat, is that there were all of these people making millions, some of them already into 10 million plus, and every single person that was there was doing it in a different way. And that was mind-blowing to me because in my head, I thought, I am missing the silver bullet. I am looking for the one thing that is going to help me make a million. And what I realized being with all of these people was there was not one way. There was an infinite number of ways. And I was seeing like eight or nine of them right in front of me. And so if they were all doing it in different ways, I just had to find the way that was right for me. So already just by walking into the room, I'm like, Oh, this is wild. 
then as I'm talking to them, they're talking about their partners and their wives and their husbands and their kids. And they're talking about their visions and their missions. And I'm like, they sound like me. Like they're saying all of the things that I say. And I think quite often what holds people back when it comes to taking like the next leap financially in their business is that people are always looking for what is different. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, she's been in business for 10 years. Oh, she's got a massive audience. Oh, they're doing this. They're doing that. Looking for all of the reasons that separate them from the goal. In that room, what I started doing was noticing all of the similarities and One of the most powerful questions I've ever asked myself is, why not me? If they can do it, why not me? Like, oh, she's a single mom. Oh, okay. Well, if she can do it, why not me? Oh, they're doing it. Oh, yeah, well, I've got that. And so that's the next bit. Just start looking for all of the things that connect you because there are so many. There are so many. And so these things just... Already, I'm feeling like this is special and I can do it. But the thing that shifted everything was the fact that we kind of had these presentations. The presentations were great. But then we went on a overnight camp and we're like white water rafting down the river and we're camping outside. Camping and white water rafting are not my thing, by the way. (laughs) I'm more like glamping and like, let's, let's do it nicely. But I'm, I'm immersing myself. I'm getting into it and we're doing the white water rafting, which I just, I'm very uncomfortable. Like I just, I, I wasn't at that point in time. This is how much has changed because I now love a cold plunge. But at the time I'm like cold water. <laughs> so we're doing this thing and we're all in our dinghies and we're going round and it's kind of, it's, it's okay. But we, everybody kind of collects at the end of this strip of water and everybody's looking up and I'm looking up at what they're looking up at and immediately my whole body is like no way there is no way that I am climbing up there and jumping off like I know that that is what the plan is and I'm like I'm not doing it And uh, I'm in a boat with a guy called Glenn Ledwell, who runs a company called Mind Movies, which is one of the first programs I ever bought. It's like a an electric vision boarding, and you put music, and you can kind of put your visions on it. It's very cool. Anyway, he's like, "You're going up." He's he's Australian. I won't try and do the accent, but he's like, (laughs) "You are getting up there." And I'm like, no, he's like, you are not letting down the team. And that that was a big one for me. Like that felt like, am I going to be the person who lets everybody else down by not being a good team player? Like I wasn't, I didn't want that to happen, but I also wasn't ready to commit. So I lied to myself. I was like, I'm going to get out and I'm going to climb up. But if I don't want to jump, then I'm going to climb down. I, I was, there's only one way down. So I climb up this um, cliff and I'm like already the adrenaline's pumping, my heart is pumping and it just, everything is going against what I know to be safe and right for me as a human being. (laughs) And at the same time I'm there, I'm at the top of this bloody cliff and everybody's down and everybody starts counting me down, you know, like 10, 9, 8. And I'm like, <sighs> and I'm breathing and I'm hearing them and the countdown. And, I, and I'm like, right, okay. And I'm psyching myself up and I go to, it's like being in a slow motion film, you know, like I'm like running to the edge. And as they're like, one, I stop. <laughs> My, my, I just my whole body stops and I'm not going over and it's like everyone's like oh come on come on come on and as they start counting again in my head I'm just like three two one and I jump over the edge of this cliff and it's like time expands and contracts at the same time I'm going really slowly but really really quickly 
and I'm just all of a sudden I feel my feet touching the surface of the water and my whole body is submerged and I'm screaming like I scream all the way down and then my head comes up and everybody's clapping everybody's cheering me on and I realize right there in that moment they think they're clapping the fact that I've just jumped off the cliff but I know right there in that moment that I have just become a millionaire like if I can do that I can do anything and I am choosing that million pounds and I knew when I left that retreat there was no chance that that following year, I wasn't going to make a million. I knew it in every single cell of my body. And it happened on that jump. I love that. I literally just gave me goosebumps when you were saying that. Just the the power in that is just so enormous. The I th- Isn't it when you have that full body, deep, deep knowing and commitment that you are going to do something? This is a done deal. Like, everything changes. It's such an energetic shift. Like it's so powerful. And um, I love, I do really want to know how high was the cliff? Because like when I was reading that in your book, one, I was like laughing (laughs) along because I would be just like you. I'd be like, I am not going to win this thing. (laughs) But like, I just was like, how high was it? Like, was it a really big drop? Was it like, what was it? For me, it was like the height of the Empire State Building. For everybody else, it was probably not that big, <laughs> but it was a big deal for me. I don't know how many feet, but it was it, it, it was significant, let's say that. I think it's so amazing. And I love that you had that experience and that you're sharing this experience because sometimes I think like doing things, it doesn't have to be jumping off a cliff, but doing things that where we choose, we we don't let our fears dictate to us. We have the power over our fears to go for it. And we physically do something. And every time it's like, we prove to ourselves, oh, I can do this. Like I, you know, don't have to let my fears control me because so often our fears are just constantly controlling us. And when we then take that back control and we start doing little things to prove to ourselves that we can do it, it shifts everything. I remember when I did my TEDx talk years ago now, the, a guy spoke, I think he was after me. And um, he shared this um, this story about how he'd been doing this like um, exercise on, it was kind of like on being fearless. And so his friends or he would give him like things to do. Um, and one of them was like, go to a busy city center and lie down on like in the middle of like the, the, the walkway, mm. just lie down on the floor. And he said it was the hardest thing he ever did out of everything that all of the little tasks and exercises he did to push himself out of his comfort zone. He said that one was the hardest to just lie down in the middle of a busy city on the ground, like people thinking, what, what the hell are you doing? And he said <laughs> it was the most liberating like few minutes just lying there in that moment of just, it was, he just said it was just so liberating. And I remember thinking like, that is amazing because so often we don't push ourselves outside of our comfort zone. So often we're not in situations like what you were in where you, you know, you're in an environment where you've, you've physically just jumped off a cliff. And um, I just think it's really powerful for us to kind of like get ourselves out of our comfort zone and put ourselves in, in situations where we, we do that so that it shapes who we are. I don't know. It's like you said, it's, it's a breakthrough moment. And I love that, 2020 you went on to do what was it 1.2 million 1.2 million I think that that's also an important thing because a quantum shift can happen in an instant but quantum transformation happens over time and so I became a millionaire in that moment but I had to continue choosing that knowing and that remembering and that certainty and that impacted then Every choice and decision that I made, I made from that place. But I didn't know that I was going to hit a million until probably November of 2020. And so I had to hold the energy of that certainty from August 2019 to November 2020 when I crossed seven figures. And then, you know, by the time we got to the end of December, we'd done 1.2. So 
we want the quantum shift, but transformation happens over time and it's in your behavior. It's who you are being that will determine how quickly you're able to create what it is that you desire. And and I think that the other thing that I want to say is, is that a quantum shift I love because it can absolutely collapse timelines for you. But when you set the intention one degree a day, I'm going to shift into the identity of the person that I want. I'm going to move beyond my comfort zone by just one degree every single day. The compound effect of that over 365 days is also profound. Yeah, it's so true. I could not agree more. I think it's just totally life-changing to ask yourself that question every day and then do your best to try and step into it every day. So what would be your number one tip for somebody listening who is like, say, at that early stage or just anyone who is just wants that next breakthrough or they feel like, uh, like, um, like some, like they're just not where they want to be at. Like what would your biggest piece of advice be for that person? I think often for me now is getting quiet. There's often a lot of noise, whether that is consuming a lot on Instagram, reading too many books on too many YouTube videos. There's so many ideas. There's so many things. It's like sometimes you want to get very, very quiet and connect with that inner voice and just asking yourself what is the best next step that is either going to take me one step away from the thing that I don't want because if you're not clear on what it is that you do want but you just know that you don't want to be here what's going to take me one step away or what if you do know what it is that you want but you still feel stuck what is going to take me one step closer today like just one step Listen for the answer. And what I'm going to say now can sometimes feel challenging, but we're looking for an answer that comes from, and I'm pointing to my chest, my solar plexus, rather than the head. We're looking for that deeper inner answer. And most frequently, that answer is very, very simple. It's not massively complicated. It is not design yourself a 286 step funnel. Like that is not your inner voice speaking. Like usually it's something very, very simple. But as soon as you hear it, there is a sense or level of resistance that comes up. That is the thing that you need to lean into. That's my invitation for you. I love that. I really love that. I just want to really recap on some of the things that I feel like I've taken away from this conversation because I think that there's so many little nuggets that I hope people have picked up on, but I just want to reiterate them because I think they're important. So like, obviously one, you have surrounded yourself with, by mentors, your whole, your whole, throughout your whole journey and really taking the time to like invest in yourself. And you even said the six months that you didn't do that, you were flailing around. <laughs> um, so I think that's a really powerful observation that most successful people invest in themselves, invest in mentors because they know they can shortcut their success and get to where they want a heck of a lot faster when they have someone a few steps ahead of them, showing them the way, like so powerful. But I think sometimes we just need a reminder of that. The second takeaway was also the fact that you have gone on lots of experiences, like you've gone to the retreat in Colombia. I think you said you went to somewhere else in Costa Rica. And I love the fact that you put yourself in those different environments to be surrounded by like-minded people who could help you to shift and up level and open your mind to things. And I love that because I always think like when you're around people who play bigger, it teaches you how you can play bigger too. And I've always found that so, so powerful. I love the fact that like when you started your first business, you really went all in on learning, like how can I just be good at building a business? How can I be really good at digital marketing? How can I learn those things? Because if you want to build a successful online business, yes, this like the thing you bring to the table, like for you, the hypnobirthing at that, in that business, but actually like the hypnobirthing without understanding of how to actually build a successful business, like you're just not going to be able to gain the traction that you want. So I love the fact that you really knew that you had to get focused on learning those things so that you could progress your business. The other thing is the time. Like 
it's not like all of this just happened overnight. This is like a long journey that you've been on. And I think that that's just, again, just something really important to acknowledge because one, I think sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves to find the idea, the thing that's supposed to set our hearts on fire, you know, and just be the th- the one thing, which is so much pressure and so unrealistic. And I think the fact that you got started, like just by choosing that you wanted a different life, thinking I need a skill, going to train in hypnotherapy and, um, and, and, and all that stuff, and then doing that for a year and then deciding after working with the wrong people, that you actually wanted to do hypnobirthing, like, and then from the hypnobirthing, realizing that you enjoyed building the business and then people came to you. And then, and it's like you said, you, you couldn't, you can't connect the docs going forward. Like that Steve Job quote says, you can only connect them going backwards. And I think this is the thing. It's like, when you have that, you make that decision of like, I want my life to be different. And then you're like, I'm here universe or whoever you want to say it to, but like, I am here to make the change. And then you take that step in that direction. And then you take another step in that direction. It's like the pathway unfolds as you just like the Rumi quote, like as you walk on the way, the way and like unfolds. And I think that I love that it, it, you know, the acknowledgement that it does take time, but if you just kind of allow it to open up, like the destination, the places that you get to experience, the things you get to experience on the journey are just so rewarding and fulfilling and the impact that you can have, the success that you can welcome in. It's just so, so amazing. Um, And then obviously like that last tip about just really kind of like tuning in and listening to what's coming up within yourself. Um, It's so powerful. I feel like you just shared so many things. So thank you so much for coming and telling us, taking us on the journey with you of like your story and um, what you have achieved is amazing. It's so inspirational. And I just think more and more people need to hear stories like yours of where, of realizing this is possible. And oh yeah, that was the other thing you shared. You said, connect yourself more with the people that you are seeing doing amazing things. Don't disconnect yourself. So I really hope for everyone listening that they find ways to connect with your story and with you and with the things you've shared rather than thinking oh well it's okay for Susie because you know all the things blah 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 um but I really hope they actually realize no they see themselves in you 100% I think if there's even the tiniest little bit of wow it's really understanding that you can only see that and feel that when it's an activation point within yourself yeah and that has been also such a powerful recognition and realization for me because I used to get triggered by other people's success and it was like the only reason that you're feeling triggered is that you know there is there's a part of you that can create that too but you're not doing it and so when I realized that I allowed myself to be inspired as opposed to negatively activated and that changed the game for me too I love it so much for everyone listening go and buy infinite receiving yeah go grab a copy and read it um where can they also connect with you where's the best place yeah susieashworth.com is my website and then over on instagram i am susie s-u-z-y underscore ashworth come over say hello yeah let me know what your number one takeaways was that's i'm there all the time I love it. Um, I'll put, pop all that in the show notes for you. Um, but I really hope you have enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time for another episode of the Jimmy's Business Show. Bye everyone. Bye.